Hello, YouTube. My name is Alan, and it's that time once again. Let's talk some metal. Tonight, I thought I would talk about a scene that I haven't touched on as a main point of focus before. It's come up here and there quite a bit in different videos and different streams, such as over at Heavy Metallurgy. But I wanted to sit down and do a full episode on this one, and it's the new wave of traditional metal, N-W-O-T-H-M. I've seen slight variations on it. Sometimes I've seen new wave of true heavy metal, uh, but I think usually new wave of traditional heavy metal is what most people think of with it. It's a sort of a subgenre within metal that I've noticed there's some confusion about. Not everybody's really familiar with what this scene is and isn't and what it encompasses. And I am by no means an expert. There are people that know a lot more about it than I do. But I figured this would be at least a decent starting point to talk about it a little bit. And that there are a lot of cool bands to mention. There's also some sort of odd aspects to the scene. And I wanted to touch on that too. So this video is not going to focus on you know, a handful of bands in a little more depth like a lot of my videos do. It's going to be a little bit more of a broad overview, look at you know, just a quick pile of albums. Here are a few quick clips so that you can get a good sense of what the scene is like. But yeah, then also offer a little commentary and a little thought exercise on the whole idea of new wave of traditional heavy metal. So without further ado, let's start with trying to figure out what this scene is, because sometimes, you know, I use this particular acronym, N-W-O-T-H-M, and people don't quite know what it means. They have a little trouble wrapping their brain around, what bands are you talking about? Where, where is this scene located? What's it trying to sound like? And so it's like, okay, let me begin by explaining something about what the scene is not. It does not refer to just any new band that has popped up in the past 10 years or so that isn't playing extreme metal. That's a little too broad, and I don't think it encompasses that many bands, at least not from my perspective. So yeah, a couple of examples, you know, Crypt Servant, you know, excellent younger band, have a couple of albums under their belt. This one's incredibly good. Um, I wouldn't necessarily put this under new wave of traditional heavy metal. Crypt Sermon have you know, a pretty solid doom metal approach. So I don't think it really belongs under the traditional metal category, although they have elements and influences from that scene, sure. Another example is the excellent Seven Kingdoms from Florida. You know, this band, again, younger band, really great sound. This is an awesome album. This is their fourth, if I remember correctly. And I think they currently have a Kickstarter working on funding their next album. But I wouldn't really put them under the new wave of traditional heavy metal banner either. Seven Kingdoms is very much a power metal band. They're in the power speed metal mode of, say, classic Blind Guardian albums. So, yeah, I don't think you want to attach this tag to just any younger 21st century heavy metal band. I think that's unfair and you're lumping too much stuff underneath the same tent at that point. You know, for my money, what I know about the scene, new wave of traditional heavy metal is really a tag meant for those bands that want to very firmly plant their flag in 1983, 1984, and pretend that nothing has changed since then. You know, hence the name traditional heavy metal. They're really operating in that style that was very prevalent for a few years before heavy metal kind of started splitting up into thrash and glam and death and other styles of metals, once you kind of got into the middle of the 1980s and started moving through the second half of the decade. So you know, these are bands that are really wanting to stick to that sort of more basic aesthetic. And when I say aesthetic, it's not just sound. It really is aesthetic. They're going for that very classic look and feel. A good example of what I'm talking about would be like, you know, a picture. You know, picture is never the most successful band, but, you know, this just kind of, you know, really exemplifies what heavy metal looked like during those first few years of popularity in the early 1980s. And you see this with a lot of the newer album releases. They go for albums that have relatively, you know, simple outlays and such. Now, again, picture this as a vintage band, but this is the kind of thing a lot of bands are copying. Simple, 
you know, layout, simple graphics, not using a lot of, you know, very cutting edge or, you know, newfangled technologies for their artwork. They want to make albums that look like this and they want to make albums that sound like this. So this is what the bands are really focusing on. You know, traditional heavy metal is sometimes a little weird to nail down as a style. It's basically that format of Iron Maiden and Judas Priest styled heavy metal. You know, those bands aren't power metal. They're not thrash metal. They're just heavy metal. And to help differentiate them from every other little subgenre, a lot of people put the tag, okay, traditional heavy metal on those. And that's what these bands really aim to emulate. So now that we've got an idea of what they're trying to sound like, where did this scene kind of come from? It seems to have sprung up in the maybe very late 90s, but more so in the early 2000s, starting up you know, during the first decade of the 21st century, and has kind of gained steam steadily ever since then. Now, I think, and this is me speculating, this isn't carved in stone anywhere, I suspect a lot of the new wave of traditional heavy metal movement got its initial spark from the success of Hammerfall when Glory to the Brave came out in 1997. Now, I know Hammerfall has become one of those bands that it's very popular to deride them. There's always been, you know, lots of reports of ego issues with band members, and yeah, a lot of people consider them a little too cheesy or whatever. Um, oops. <laughs> However, if you weren't around through most of the 1990s in the heavy metal scene, you, it's very hard maybe to understand how much of an impact this album had when it came out. Um, prior to this album, traditional heavy metal, especially in the United States, was a completely dead scene. Sure, there were bands playing and there were some good ones. They were very underground. They couldn't get a nibble from any medium or larger label whatsoever. There was no interest in promoting this stuff. But then Nuclear Blast put this one out in 97, and that completely reset the clock on this more traditional style of heavy metal. And like them or hate them, Hammerfall did help wave that flag for some of these older bands. They covered songs by bands like Stormwitch and Pretty Maids. Um, they may have even covered a picture song, I'm trying to remember. But, you know, they kind of did the whole Garage Days revisited thing for traditional heavy metal. Made some decent covers, shined a light into the corners of the 1980s metal scene, which had been, you know, dead and buried for over a decade at that point. And so it got a new generation of fans interested in that stuff and, at the same time, showed them that it could be commercially viable. Not commercial in a you know, FM radio sense, of course, but Hammerfall de quickly developed you know, a huge following. They were on you know, one of, if not the biggest metal labels around at the time and still going today and still going strong. So, yeah, now I didn't keep up with Hammerfall for very long after the first album. You know, I felt they got kind of boring, but you know, the band has had plenty of success. There's no doubt in that whatsoever. And I don't think there's any doubting that album's impact on getting a lot of people interested in the scene and reinvigorating people wanting to make that style of heavy metal again, moving away from the extreme metal and, you know, the quote unquote 1990s metal sounds that had been very dominant, again, especially in certain countries like the US, Europe, traditional metal power metal and such still had a good following through the 90s that was not the case in other places until hammerfall made a big splash another reason i suspect hammerfall had a maybe outsized impact is that some of the earlier bands that started following suit were from sweden just like hammerfall so that you had bands and to your yeah, let's start to, uh, you know, showing a few things. You had some early bands pop up like Enforcer from Sweden. Uh, some of these bands often you know, did split seven inches and stuff or had compilation appearances. I'm going to show just a few of these again, kind of random things. 
but yeah, Enforcer out of Sweden, Cauldron uh, from Canada were you know examples of this. Uh, let's see, this compilation came out in 2007 and featured several of these bands. Um, I got this mainly because they had the Atlantean Codex track on it uh, with uh, their original vocalist, but also had tracks like Metal Inquisitor that would kind of fall into this new wave of traditional vibe. It's so really the uh, other side though, the Portraits, the Ram, Enforcer, you know, these are bands that started making waves, you know, in the first half of this century, really, establishing this sound. Um, they weren't all from Sweden or Germany, of course. You had bands from other places, Sin Starlet. This was just another split uh, single I picked up somewhere along the line. Uh, Sin Starlet were from Switzerland. And uh, I'm trying to remember, I think Fionner. Yeah, Fionner's on the flip side of this, band from Argentina. So scenes were popping up all over the place with bands sort of emulating this sound, but not just the sound, again, also the style. They were dressing just like bands from the early 1980s. They were trying to come up with logos and album covers and songs that were all, you know, they really were just taking that entire package from 1983 and kind of pulling it 20 years forward in time and doing the same thing. Some things were different, of course. You know, playing techniques had evolved and changed a bit over that time. Obviously, recording tools and technologies were different. And so, you know, bands were going to utilize some of those things, being able to, uh, you know, spread music on platforms like Bandcamp has become, you know, more and more of a thing. So that these bands don't have to rely as much on big label support. And it's allowed them to create, again, this kind of you know, thriving industry with their own corner of the heavy metal verse. You've had lots of bands again then started rolling out more and more over the past five to 10 years. And some of them have you know, had a reasonable level, <coughs> oh, excuse me, a reasonable level of success. Uh, Eternal Champion, is one of the better known ones. I don't have a physical copy of Eternal Champions albums. They're one that don't quite click with me personally, but uh, Traveler have done a couple of albums. This is a band out of Canada. Canada has a good scene going on with this, not only with Traveler, but uh, X and Cauldron, but bands like Riot City, which is one of my favorites from this movement. You had other bands from Switzerland pop up, like Megaton Sword. This album has gotten a lot of hype from folks. A lot of folks really dig it. Um, the U.S. has produced a lot of these bands, no surprise. You've got Savage Master from Kentucky. Uh, you've got the excellent Visigoth out of Salt Lake City. Uh, the vocalist here is the same fellow who did vocals with and uh, some of the music with Caladan Brood on their black metal album which you know very summoning influenced but here he is doing great vocals um, in a different style you've got california bands of course with the excellent fortress of uh, their ep and also saber from the california scene so yeah bands have popped up kind of everywhere doing this kind of stuff you have other additional compilation albums uh, that have featured some of these bands. The Dive Bomb series, Masters of Metal, has some bands in this style spread across them. So here again, you see Riot City, uh, Crypt Sermon is there. Again, I wouldn't put Crypt Sermon in New Wave of Traditional Heavy Metal, but it's another good younger band. Old Wolf uh, gets mentioned with these. There's five volumes of this. I don't know all of them, just one or two. And, you know, the relative success for a lot of these bands, uh, and again, bands in other places too, Cell Sword out of the UK uh, is one more that I forgot to mention a moment ago. But the relative success of these bands has also helped, you know, entice some older bands out of retirement to take another stab at things as well. We saw a good example of this last year with the return of Glacier, a US band who had, had done demos. They did one hard to find EP back in the day. But one of the members is back with a new lineup, and this album came out to a good amount of fanfare and acclaim. It does have uh, the opening track alone, Eldest and Truest, is a fantastic song. It's worth the price of admission alone. So yeah, you've got you know, all these bands you know, from all over the place doing this thing. But me showing records and telling you what they sound like is one thing. 
let's go over to some clips and actually give you a chance to check a few of these out. So just gonna play a couple of short clips from a few of these. I picked kind of at random. Again, my goal here is not to pick the best or my favorite, but just to make sure folks have an idea of what I'm talking about if you're not really familiar with this style. So let's start with a track from uh, Canada's Traveler. Uh, this has been a pretty popular band. Their first album made a bit of a splash. So here's a little bit of Traveler from their debut. There's a little bit of Traveler from their debut album, and it's very emblematic of what the scene is trying to do. Lots of twin guitar harmonies, you know, uh, vocals that, you know, they don't have to be the best vocalist in the world, but they're going for that, you know, kind of, you know, soaring, anthemic vibe. Music's going to be pretty upbeat, a little bit fast a lot of the time. It's meant to get the fists in the air, get the heads banging, uh, Again, it's very much meant to sound like something that would have come out in the early 1980s. Some of these bands are very good at that. The first time I heard songs by a couple of these bands, I had to stop and ask, like, is that something new or is that an old one that I don't know? Uh, so, yeah, they very much go for that vibe. All right, let's check out uh, another clip. This will also be a Canadian band. This is going to be Riot City I mentioned a minute ago. And this is the opening track from their self-titled, uh, or sorry, their debut, Burn the Night. Uh, excellent speed metal track. Let's give it just a quick listen. There's a little bit of Riot City with the first track off of Burn the Night. Uh, the track is called Warrior of Time. Really good, forceful sound. Uh, Riot City is a little more aggressive than some of the other bands in this style. They focus a little bit more on the speed sometimes and do it very, very well. Let's do one more clip. Some of these bands trend in a little bit more of an epic sounding direction. And a great example of that is Cellsword from the UK. Uh, my understanding is sadly they have split up at this point, but they've left a couple of really good albums in their wake. And so here is a clip uh, from And Now We Ride. I don't have a physical copy of this. To my knowledge, they didn't officially release physical copies, but it's available still on Bandcamp. <laughs> 
But here's a little bit of Sellsword. When it began, he was strong, but the road has been so long. Years have passed, age has come, now he's old and grey and done. What a trial! All right, so well, excellent sounds of Sellsword, and again, showcasing the more epic side of the new wave of traditional heavy metal. So there's a lot of great bands to check out. There's also, however, just a lot of bands to check out. There are some YouTube you know, channels completely dedicated to new wave of traditional heavy metal that feature a ton of the albums and songs and such. And it seems like the list is just never ending. If you start going down that rabbit hole, it could take you a long, long time to ever hit bottom. I've poked around in there some, but I don't pretend to know even a fraction of the bands that are out there. And you know, this kind of brings me to some points about new wave of traditional heavy metal as a scene or as a style that I think are just you know, worth throwing out there as, you know, for thought, you know, food for thought, so to speak. I'm kind of of two minds about the entire movement. And you know, what really got me thinking about this more was some discussions with other YouTube content creators recently who also you know, like this stuff, but it turned out had you know, kind of you know, the same point of view. It's like, oh, okay, that's interesting. It's not just me who is a little bit torn on what to think about this. So let's start again with the positives. You have some very talented younger bands putting out some amazingly good music. That's always going to be a good thing. It's also very nice to see younger bands reconnect with the scene that came long before. It's kind of showing that heavy metal, yes, it really has successfully crossed you know, multiple generation gaps at this point. And as such, Heavy metal has a bright future. It's not getting completely forgotten and left behind where nobody wants to go back and listen to it anymore. There's lots of younger people who are very interested in revisiting those 80s and sort of building their own band and their own legacy directly on top of that sound, copying and pasting it into you know, the 21st century. And that, of course, is amazing and excellent and kudos. You know, I think it also works well that in this day and age, you know, these bands have very realistic expectations. A lot of times in the early 80s, bands maybe were naive or unrealistic, you know, thinking that they were going to become, you know, the next big MTV rock stars and tour the world and all this kind of stuff. And of course, that only happens for very few bands in any particular scene. You very much get the sense these younger bands in the new wave of traditional heavy metal, they understand their place in the universe, that none of them are going to really start, you know, playing gigantic stadiums every year, you know, selling out venues the way Iron Maiden does or anything like that. They're going to, you know, make their albums, release them, but they're not going to be quitting their day jobs anytime soon. They're doing it because they really love the style of music. They enjoy it. You know, they're, they're talented. They want to you know, put their artistic product out there. And yeah, you know, if they can have some fun and make some money with it, that's great. But yeah, they don't have these, they don't seem to have you know, these daydreams of, yeah, playing to you know, 80,000 people five nights in a row and selling out you know, Madison Square Garden and all this kind of stuff. You know, so I think they've got you know, very realistic goals. And they're doing it because they honestly do really love the music and enjoy playing it, which again, fantastic. That's great. Where I'm a little, um, I don't know quite the right word here. I've been trying to come up with it. Concerned has kind of the wrong connotation. Um, but where I have some pause with the new wave of traditional heavy metal 
is the fact that it it doesn't just wear its influences on its sleeve. It wears them on its denim jacket and on their leather pants and on you know their funky you know neon headband and on their album cover and everywhere else. These bands really, really are, in a sense, you know, copycats. And I'm not saying that in a real derogatory way. I'm just saying that they very, very much just want to do what has already been done. They're not really looking to update the sound or modify the sound or build upon the sound. They hear all these great old Stormwitch albums and things like that, and they just want to make an album exactly like that. And that's okay. Metal has always been full of you know, bands that hear somebody else do something they love and, well, they kind of follow suit. It, the only problem with it and why it gives me a little bit of pause is I don't know what it means for the future of this particular style of metal. Because you can only reinvent the wheel so many times before it does get a little bit stale. And you know, this wheel was already firmly chiseled out of rock very nicely shaped and was rolling along just fine years before a lot of these musicians and the newer bands were even born that doesn't mean they can't go and copy them but it means that your entire project you know you you're almost starting off by painting yourself into a corner you're saying that all i want to do is make an album that sounds exactly like what these guys and these other bands made 30 or 40 years ago I was like okay you can certainly do that you can have fun with it some people will dig it what are you going to do next are you going to make another album that sounds exactly like what all those other bands did 40 some years ago and have it kind of look the same and have it kind of sound the same how much mileage is there in that you can always do it because it's fun and because you enjoy it sure that's absolutely fine but in terms of, you know, leaving an impression, you know, having a, a fan base follow you, having, you know, any sort of you know, real impact or importance on the heavy metal scene, how many times can you go back to that same well and keep doing that same thing? That I don't know. Heavy metal fans can be a very loyal and in a lot of ways a very conservative lot just in terms of they like having the same thing over and over again a lot of times. There are a lot of people that like, you know, every single black metal band that tries to sound like Dark Throne or every single death metal band that, you know, tries to, you know, emulate Cannibal Corpse. So, you know, there's an audience for this. Um, I don't know how big that audience is long term. That was one of the points you know, that some other YouTube content creators had brought up. In particular, uh, I'm not wanting to speak for folks, but one of the folks I was talking to was Andy over at the Cloudy Milder uh, YouTube channel. You know, he mentioned that, yeah, it's like, you know, sometimes I find an album I like by one of these bands, and that's great. I love it. But I don't really dig into their catalog much because I feel like I'm not going to find a whole lot of variation there. And it's just going to be a lot more songs that sound the same. And it might make me enjoy their albums even less. Like there, there could be something to that. You know, when you're starting off with your entire aesthetic, you know, being tied, you know, very strictly to something that came long before your time, can you keep doing that? Can can in these bands, you know, again, some of them have gotten you a couple of albums out so far, and they've done pretty well with it. Um, are they going to be able to get you know, a third, a fourth, a fifth album, and and keep momentum? going and keep interest going in what they're doing or is it just going to start to feel like yeah that's you know just another album by the same band and it not only sounds like their first three albums it also sounds like dozens upon dozens of albums coming out by other bands oh yeah and it also sounds like dozens and dozens of other albums that came out 40 years ago you know that's where it may be a little more difficult for you know someone of my age to really you know dive deep into this stuff as opposed to you know somebody who's younger if you're you know 20 years old and these kind of bands are some of your you know first exposure to this style of music and you're going head over heels for it that is awesome go for it i'm glad that's happening you know, 
But from my perspective, you know, I can hear these and think, yeah, some of these are really great and I really enjoy them. But I have heard a lot of this before because I've been listening to this stuff, you know, for 30 some years. And so it's like, oh, yeah, this is really good. It reminds me exactly of the second Stormwitch album. Or, oh, yeah, you know, Glacier's back. That's great. I remember Glacier being, or, you know, I, I was listening to Glacier 15 years ago. Um, and this isn't like a new revelation to me. It's like, yeah, okay, they're back. And is this really as good as the EP? No. <laughs> and that's part of the problem. Can these bands, you know, really live up to their predecessors and surpass them or not? It's a hard sell for folks that are more my age you know the, the metal fans that grew up you know in the 80s and you know really got deeper into things as the 90s went by we've heard so much heavy metal in this traditional style not just the iron maiden catalog and the judas priest catalog but we've worked through the storm witch catalog we've worked through the rage and the center and yeah, um, we've found you know the picture albums, and we found you know, all these other you know odd ones from European bands and around the U.S. and Canada. Again, you can only listen to the same thing being done by a different band so many times before. It's really hard for those new releases to win you over and have a huge impact. You know, that said, again, I'm not trying to rain on the scenes parade whatsoever. I've heard some albums that I really love out of this scene. And I'll probably do a video sometime featuring, you know, a little more of a concentrated focus on a few of those things, like Riot City and Fortress, ones that are really, really uh, wowing me and winning me over. But, you know, for every one of those bands, there are others I check out that are kind of like, well, this is okay, but I've heard it a whole bunch of times before. I, I don't think i'll revisit you know those albums very often and i probably won't keep up with those bands either but hey you might say the same thing is true of absolutely any other scene when something happens and gets a little momentum a scene can get saturated very very quickly it's happened with every major style of heavy metal uh <laughs> really since the beginning you get a couple of glam metals doing well in the mid 80s everybody's buying hairspray a couple of thrash bands start getting more play everybody's wearing black pants and white sneakers death metal got popular and death metal got way too popular and everybody was trying to gurgle and blast beat black metal got popular and all of a sudden everybody was breaking out the corpse paint and you know trying to sound all lo-fi low-tech it, it happens to every scene so maybe this really isn't anything different this time around other than the fact that you know this is a new scene that very much just wants to be an old scene but at the end of the day, that's not the greatest crime either. So that's enough of my thoughts and ramblings about the new wave of traditional heavy metal. And again, it is not a scene I am an expert on whatsoever. So let's talk metal in the comments down below. Tell me what bands do I really need to check out? And keep in mind, I'm going to be a little skeptical. I'm going to be a little hard to please with some of this stuff. So you got to give me the best ones that I may have overlooked and not heard. There's hundreds of these bands from what I can tell. I know there's good ones out there. That's a lot of stuff to pick and choose through though. So yeah, point me to some of your favorites. What do you think of the scene overall? Is it just kind of, you know, tired and lame that they're just copycatting stuff that was done <laughs> a generation ago? Or is it absolutely fantastic and cool that it's, you know, sort of a revival of the style? Where do you stand on this whole thing? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. All right, it's getting late. Time to wrap this one up. So until the next time, everybody take care. And as always, keep banging your head, just like they did back in 1983.